All right, we're gonna take a look at par probability part one. So for question number one, we have a ball that is drawn randomly from a jar that contains six red balls, two white balls, and five yellow balls. We're gonna find the probability of the given event. So we're talking about a red ball being drawn. There are six red balls out of the total that we have is six plus two plus five, that's 13. So six out of 13 is the probability that a red one's drawn. Now a white ball, there's only two of those. Again, it's out of 13, so there we go. Um, remember for these ones, we're gonna be doing numbers one to 11, 12 to 15, 17 to 31 odd, and then number 35. All right, so question number three. A group of people were asked if they had run a red light in the last year. 150 responded yes, and 185 responded no. So find the probability that a person is at random has a run a red light in the past year. So that would be 150 out of the total number of people that were surveyed. So that would be 150 plus the 185. So we're talking about 150 out of 335. So that's about 44.8%. For question number five, we're trying to keep the probability of tossing a six-sided die, and we're looking at the numbers one through six. We want to get a five. So the probability of that happening would be one time out of those six. For number seven, it says we're giving a test to a group of students. The grades and gender are summarized below. So we have these male students and these female students. Um, if one student was chosen at random, find the probability that that student was female. So if we look at the female row, there's a total of 26 female students here in this group of students. And the total students that we have is 65. So we're gonna have 65 that adds together um, what's making up this particular group of just male and female students. For question number nine, we're gonna compute the probability of tossing a six-sided die and getting an even number. So the even numbers are two, four, and six. So there are three ways that can happen out of six. So one half, or we might say 50%. <clears throat> All right, now we zoomed in better. Um, if you pick one card at random from a standard deck of cards, what is the probability that it will be a king? So in a deck of 52 cards, and again, if you're not sure about how what the cards look like, you can always Google um, and it will send you a picture or I'll post that for us. Um, but the kings, there are actually four of each of the different types of cards in a deck. And so there will be four and there are 52 cards in a deck. So four out of 52, that can also reduce to be one out of 13. <clears throat> if you pick one card at random, what's the probability that it'll be a diamond? So the diamond is one of the suits and there are four different suits. So we could just say one out of four, um, but you can also just say the total number of cards, which there's 13 of that particular suit, but it really it's one fourth of a standard deck. For number 13, compute the probability of rolling a 12 sided die and getting a number other than eight. So the probability of getting an eight is one out of 12. So you could sit and list all the different numbers, but we could also do is by the complement, because it wants everything but that one eight. So we'll do one minus that one twelfth, which is another way we could just say that's gonna be 11 twelfths. For 14, if you have one card at random from a standard deck of cards, what is the probability it is not the ace of spades? So the ace of spades is only one card out of 52. So again, it's like the complement. And we could just take one minus that, which would be 51 out of 52. If you're not sure about those last fractions, just to kind of make sure we're on the same page here, <laughs> instead of writing like the one, it could have been 12 out of 12, because that is equal to one. That way they have the same denominators. Then you simplify by subtracting the numerators. Same thing's happening here. I was thinking about it as like 52 out of 52. So subtracting one gets you 51 over 52. For question 15, referring to the grade table for number seven, what is the probability that a student did not earn a C? So let's look at the students that did earn a C. So we're going back to number seven. 
the students that earned a C, there were 13 that were male and there were 12 that were female. Here's our total C students is 25 and that was still at a 65. So those that earned a C would be 25 out of 65, but we wanna not earn a C, so let's take one minus that. <clears throat> and again, that's like 65 over 65 minus the 25 over 65, which is equal to 40 out of 65. To reduce that more, if you divide it by five, that would be 8 thirteenths. All right, let's skip on down to 17. We want a six-sided dice, it's rolled twice, so two times. What's the probability of showing a six on both rolls? So if you roll it the first time, the probability of that happening would be one out of six. And the second roll would be one out of six as well. So together, remember for the probability of event A and B happening, we multiply those together. So that'll be one over 36. For number 19, a dice is rolled twice again. What is the probability of showing a five on the first roll and an even number on the second roll? So five on the first roll, again, we're talking about probability of A and B which the five is the first one. That's one out of six times. Okay, event B is getting the even number. So that's getting a two, a four, or a six, which happens three out of six ways. So we're gonna get three out of 36, uh, which reduces to one over 12. For question number 21, we have a jar that contains 17 red marbles and 32 blue marbles. If you reach out in the jar and pull out two marbles, find the probability that both are red. So if I reach in the jar and pull out two marbles, so the first marble, there is 17 out of our total here. 17 plus 32 is 49. Now, if we actually did get red and we want to get red again, there's going to be one less of them. And there's also one less marble because we're picking those two. So this becomes, well, you could reduce the second fraction. It's 17 out of 49 times 1 over 3. So 17 out of 147 reduced. For question 23, we have Burn Ernie. They have a well-shuffled standard deck of 52 cards. They each draw one card from their own deck. Let's look at the probability. So Burn and Ernie both drawing an ace. So they're two independent, totally separate decks. So drawing an ace would be four out of 52 for Bert, and then four out of 52 for Bernie. Um, we can reduce those, that's 1 13th times 1 13th, which is one over 69. Now the probability that we have Bert drawing an ace, still four out of 52, but this time it says Bernie does not. So those are gonna be the 48 other cards, still out of 52, because it was his own deck. So that's gonna become 192 over 27.4, which reduces to 12 over 169. Now we're looking at neither Bert nor Ernie drawing an ace. So that's gonna be 48 out of 52 times 48 out of 52, which will equal 2304 out of 2704 which would reduce to 144 over 169. And kind of time on space, it'd be really nice if you <laughs> use some scratch paper for this. I'm trying to squeeze it all in so I could see the problems. But um, for part D, Burn and Ernie both draw a heart. So to draw a heart, remember the probability of that would be 13 out of 52, or we could say 1 fourth. Um, and then it's again 13 out of 52 for the other heart. Or again, we could say 1 fourth which becomes 1 16th. And if you multiply um, the 13 times 13, we get 169 over 2704, which would reduce to that same 1 16th answer. All right, and then we have one more here. Bert gets a card that is not a jack, so that would be just like the not an ace, 48 out of 52, so four less cards, because there's four jacks in a deck. And Ernie draws a card that is not a heart, so not a heart would be 39 out of 52. So this becomes 1872 out of 2704, reduces to 117 out of 169.
All right, skipping over to question 25, we want to compute the probability of drawing a king from a deck of cards. So getting a king is 4 out of 52. Then drawing a queen. So if we have that queen already, we know that there are 51 king already. That 51 is how many cards we'd have left, and there would still be four that are queens because we chose a king, and next it was a queen. So that would become 16 out of 26, 52. We could reduce it, 4 out of 6, 63. For 27, we have a math class that consists of 25 students. Um, it contains 14 are female, 11 are male. Two students are selected random to participate in a probability experiment. Could be the probability that a male is selected, then a female. So a male would be 11 out of those 25, and then a female happening would be 14 out of, there would only be 24 students left. That would be 154 out of 600 equals 77 over 300 with reducing. Next we have a uh, female selected, then a male. Well, it's really the same situation. Uh, the numerators will look different for a second because there's 14 female out of 25 times 11 out of 25 for the male. But it would still become the same answer because you just multiply across. Oops, I realize. 11 out of 24, sorry. <clears throat> now two males being selected. We're going to have 11 out of the 25, and then it will be only 10 out of 24 because you already selected one male. So we have that. That'll be 110 out of 600, which reducing becomes 11 over 60. All right, two fame females, so really similar, but this time it's going to be 14 out of 25 times 13 out of 24. And so then that's going to be equal to 91 out of 300. And then the last one there, we have no males are selected. Really, that means that we have two females, so it's going to be the same answer. We're going to get 91 out of 300. And that's, again, because we were just having females and males in this particular class of 25. For question 29, we are giving a test to a group of students. The grades and gender are summarized below. One student was chosen at random. Find the probability the student was female and earned an A. So the female earning an A would be 10, and that's out of our total of 65. So 10 out of 65. And we can reduce that if we divide by 5, that would be 2 out of 13. For number 31, we have the jar contains 6 red marbles and 8 blue marbles. They're numbered 1 through 6 and then 1 through 8. A marble is drawn from a, a random from the jar. Find the probability that the marble is red or odd colored. So the probability that we are red, well, there's 6 of those. So 6 out of a total of 14 or odd numbered. So what other possibilities do we have? Well, if we look at the numbers, we want it to be odd. So the first set of red marbles, we have one, three, and five sitting in there. For the blue marbles, we have one, three, five, and seven. So we have a total of seven numbers that are odd out of those 14, but we kind of double counted because we had an overlap the one, three, and five were also already counted here as the red marbles, so we're going to subtract that out, which ends up leaving us with 10 out of 14 or 5 sevenths. So again, we're using that property okay, right over here that um, the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersected with B. All right, and zooming over to the last couple here, question number 33, I mean 35, that's our last one. Can we probably draw the king of hearts or a queen from a deck of cards? So the king is going to be king of hearts, one card out of 52, plus, again, you're looking at or, so that's why we're adding this time, the queen from a deck of 52 cards. So there are four ways to choose a queen. 
out of those 52. There's no overlap, so we're not going to have to subtract anything. So it's just 5 out of 52, final answer.